Welcome to this exclusive interview with His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia, Mr. Zogbatar uh, Damdin. Welcome to Kuwait, Your Excellency, and thank you for allowing us this interview. Well, uh, thank you, and I really thank the Kuwaiti government for hosting me here in your beautiful country, and also thank you for taking an interest in Mongolia. Absolutely. Uh, Your Excellency, since the establishment of uh, diplomatic ties uh, uh, between the two countries uh, since 1975, relations have developed over the years uh, remarkably. Um, in March of this year, uh, a media delegation from Mongolia came to visit Kuwait, spent a few days, mm -hmm. got to meet with uh, high-ranking government officials and were able to visit some of Kuwait's most important sites. And a reciprocal visit was made by a Kuwaiti media delegation to Mongolia in November earlier, mm -hmm. uh, last month. Uh, I was uh, fortunate to be part of this media delegation and uh, we were very impressed with uh, the freedoms enjoyed by the media as well as how advanced they were. Um, how would you rate uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the, de the developments of the media in Mongolia and how important are these types of person-to-person -person exchanges? Well, person-to-person uh, -person exchanges the most core element of the relationship of any countries because my understanding is that in modern relationship you know government to government relationship is developed for the purpose of making sure that ordinary people get to know each other you know because the governments are to serve the people and therefore, uh, the job of the government is to facilitate, uh, to make it easy for the uh, people of the two countries and for the businesses of the two countries to uh, mutually exchange their experiences, to interact, to cooperate. And that is also the base of a normal, peaceful relationship in the world, you know. It, it starts from this little brick where human-to-human -human relationship is built. And, you know, ordinary people usually carry the idea of peace in their hearts. And therefore, it is really fundamental rock where this global relationship starts. So it is really important. Now, when it comes to media freedom, well, uh, Mongolia is a democratic uh, country, open, liberal democracy, in the true sense of the word. And uh, therefore, constitutionally, freedom of speech, freedom of expression is the fundamental value. Therefore, uh, the fact that our people can say whatever they think of their government is a very crucial value, the very essence of our society. And this is the value on which uh, the society is built as well. So therefore, you know, we, we really um, take uh, our media seriously. And in Mongolia, they say that uh, media is the fourth branch of government. And indeed, they're powerful, uh, you know, when we talk about democracy, then democracy is the rule of people. Uh, and uh, that rule is implemented through the media as well. So there are, of course, they uh, govern through parliament, uh, through government, oh, but when the government and parliament do not listen enough to the people, then the, uh, you know, constant other uh, channel of pressure and communication with the government is the media. Excellency, uh, as in the capacity of Minister of Foreign Affairs, this is your first visit to Kuwait, mm -hmm. but uh, you have visited Kuwait in the past and you have uh, developed friendships in Kuwait. Uh, we would like to hear about your relation uh, with Kuwait. What is your impression of Kuwait? and? Uh, 
What do you expect to achieve from your current visit? Well, um, yes, uh, you mentioned we established diplomatic, uh, diplomatic relationship back in 1975. So it's been quite a while, but uh, our relationship, since, since we went democratic and open, uh, our relationship went really f much further. And uh, Mongolia was uh, uh, one of the first countries, really, to stand up against the invasion and say, this cannot be tolerated in the world affairs. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and this is, at that time, we did not have as close relationship with Ku Kuwaiti, Kuwaiti government. But, I mean, this fundamental value that if you are if you are a, mm, a responsible member of the international community, then you yourself, uh, you know, uh, stay bound by the rules and norms of international law, but also you expect others to be bound by it. And when these uh, limits are stepped over, you know, countries like ours, small countries, we should be standing up for these principles and norms of international law. And therefore, Mongolia, uh, you know, um, stood up uh, against that invasion. And back in 1995, when um, uh, your uh, late emir, uh, Sheikh Jabir, uh, visited Mongolia, I was a young, fresh graduate uh, from the university. Uh, and uh, I worked uh, for your delegation. And it was my first experience of working with this high delegation. And uh, since then, I had a very uh, close, warm relationship with Kuwaitis. I visited Kuwait already a couple of times. Uh, when I was foreign policy advisor to our president, I was uh, the one who also initiated and uh, planned the visit of our president uh, to Kuwait. And I was uh, taking part in maintaining the contact between the president's office and the Amiri family. And uh, we really developed this also personal human-to-human uh, -human bonds. And I value that a great deal. Uh, Sheikh Nasser was always, uh, you know, very committed and somehow very um, humanly sympathetic to Mongolia. And I, I believe Kuwait was always also with, uh, uh, you know, sincere um, call for help was approaching Mongolia in times of our transition. And in the 90s, we had a very difficult transition period. For almost a decade, the country's economy was stalled. You know, we really had to. This is after the, uh, after the separation from Russia. Uh, well, uh, we were n never part of Russia. Uh, but we were a socialist country, and when we, uh, you know, changed our uh, system and we started uh, our path uh, to the transition to uh, market economy and liberal democracy, then really we needed a help of international community. And Kuwait was always there, helping Mongolia, and uh, for example, mm, Kuwait and Mongolia, one of the highlights of our cooperation is environmental protection. And during the crisis times, uh, you know, uh, environment was something that was really left behind because you needed, uh, you had other priorities, you know. Poverty was already, you know, uh, picking up, uh, uh, you know, the scale, uh, the, um, Social issues were, uh, you know, aggravating, and the government had really urgent issues to solve in this socio-economic sphere, and therefore, very often, like issues like environment were uh, not at the top priority. But with the help of uh, Kuwaiti friends, we really could also have um, 
certain programs and certain you know projects done in the environmental field and after all environment is the base of development you know no environment no development it's as simple as that so uh, therefore uh, you know QIT friends and QIT Amiri family was very committed in helping Mongolia's transition also in you know uh, drawing uh, the attention of the government to the sectors to which it otherwise would not have had enough attention. So uh, it was a very fruitful cooperation. Mm -hmm. And also it is, to a great extent, based on personal friendly relationship of individuals, of uh, our leaders. Um, Excellency, uh, Mongolia has uh, recently signed uh, uh, some important agreements with the uh, Kuwait uh, Fund for Economic Development. Uh, could you please elaborate on these agreements? Yeah, uh, we uh, uh, under these agreements, we are really thinking of uh, developing certain economic projects of uh, significance to both countries. So, uh, with the uh, actually with Kuwait, we were successfully implementing a uh, couple of uh, important infrastructural projects. For example, one of the main roads to one of the very important touristic sites mm -hmm. was built uh, at the funding of uh, the QAT uh, government. And uh, that really impacted tourism. And that impacted tourism not only from other countries, but that impacted internal tourism. And internal tourism is one of the uh, very important uh, uh, mechanisms and factors in, uh, you know, driving the economy as well. So uh, that was also a very uh, important uh, project uh, for uh, our countries. Energy sector uh, cooperation is of uh, interest to us as well. Uh, and I know that uh, Kuwait is uh, looking into uh, renewable energy. Uh, and developing new uh, renewable energy projects. And uh, I understand you have a plan to uh, uh, make sure that the uh, renewable energy accounts for up to 15% of your total energy generation. Diversification. Yeah. And that is also, we also have similar uh, objectives. And in terms of renewable energy, Mongolia is a very interesting and uh, prospective economy because uh, first wind energy we have uh, uh, very uh, promising future uh, solar energy you know almost throughout the year we have uh, sunny days so uh, and then in addition to that Mongolia has uh, is one of the richest countries in terms of uh, rare earth deposits and these rare earth deposits are uh, the uh, raw material for building uh, batteries and mm -hmm. for renewable energy, you know, plants. This is a very important component. So, in short, we have all the right ingredients there. And we're trying to attract investment from overseas, and including Kuwait as well. And therefore, we want our Kuwaiti friends to look into Mongolia from that investment uh, perspective as well. And uh, we are supporting this idea of uh, uh, Asian supergrid. And Asian supergrid idea was developed by SoftBank and now uh, in Northeast Asia, South Korean government is supporting it, uh, the Japanese government is supporting it, Russia and China are, are also interested in it. So uh, we want so what it's uh, energy yeah, for it's, you know building a big energy grid, uh, which will be you know supplying, making sure that the supplies are uninterrupted and uh, guaranteed from the uh, energy resource rich countries to all the other economies. So it will be ensuring the reliability of the energy. Uh, sector and energy, it will be making sure that the uh, energy supply is secure. 
and uh, we want to tap into that project and from that perspective again you know what I'm really trying to say is that when we're talking about uh, renewable energy it's not about supplying energy to Mongolia mm -hmm. but it's about supplying energy to Northeast Asia mm -hmm. and Northeast Asia is uh, the region that hosts the biggest economies in the world China South Korea Japan Russia so uh, therefore you know from that perspective we're talking about global supply of energy and that could be also interesting to investors uh, Excellency uh, here in Kuwait uh, Kuwait is executing a number of mega projects uh, as part of uh, Kuwait's comprehensive de development plan for 2035 uh, it aims to diver diversify Kuwait's economy away from uh, you know just relying on oil and fuel uh, can you tell us about the involvement of the Republic of Mongolia in uh, some of those projects yeah uh, we are aware of these big projects and you're building a big oil uh, refinery here as well uh, we're also in Mongolia uh, building our own uh, oil refinery uh, with the Indian government. And we need to train our experts. So uh, therefore, from this perspective, you know, Kuwait and uh, Kuwaiti universities and training uh, institutions are of interest to us. Mm -hmm. Because really, I mean, you have experience.